Your heart has beat continuously for your entire life, from that very first heartbeat back when you were a fetus developing in the uterus until this very day. That constant rhythm that keeps the blood pumping through your arteries is thanks to a small mass of cardiac tissue called the sinoatrial node, along with a complex cardiac conduction system that runs through your heart, coordinating your heartbeat. In this video, we're gonna build out the cardiac conduction system piece by piece, learn how it all works, and then use that to understand the different parts of an ECG or EKG. And throughout the video, we'll look at real human cadavers and other cadaveric images provided by Anatomage, the creator of the world's first virtual dissection table. So you can see all of these structures are arranged three-dimensionally in the body. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know this whole process by heart. Well, by brain, because that's where memories are stored, but you know what I mean. Let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. So let's start by drawing out the heart. Here we have an outline of the main structure of the heart on the cardiac muscle. We've got the right atrium and the right ventricle and the left atrium and the left ventricle. And of course we have the right side in blue because it's low oxygen blood, the left side in red because it's high oxygen blood that's just come from the lungs. And remember our blood is always red, never blue. That's just the colors we use in the diagrams. Blood is gonna come into the right side through the superior and inferior vena cavas into the right atrium. It'll pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and the right ventricle is gonna pump it out through the pulmonary artery to go to the lungs to receive some oxygen. The blood is gonna get back to the heart through the pulmonary veins and go into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it'll pass through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle is gonna pump it very forcefully out through the aorta so it can travel throughout the rest of the body and deliver the oxygen and nutrients and hormones and all the other stuff that's in our blood. In between the left side and the right side of the heart, we have the septum that really divides the heart into those two halves. And here we can see in the anatomage models, the right atrium and the right ventricle sitting sort of anterior to the left side where we have the left atrium and the left ventricle. Now for the rest of the video, I'm gonna assume you know those structures pretty well, but if you wanna refresh your whole lesson on all of that, check out my Pathway of Blood Through the Heart video. Links down below for that. Now in the heart, there's three different types of tissue that we're concerned about in this video. First, we have the cardiac conduction system itself. That's gonna be in yellow on this diagram, and that's non-contractile cardiac tissue. In other words, these aren't muscle cells that are contracting. They're gonna be more like nervous tissue that's gonna be conducting signals throughout the heart. Second, we have the cardiac muscle tissue. This is gonna be contractile tissue. It's gonna be tissue that contracts and, and pumps blood, but it also conducts signals as well. The cardiac conduction system, which is just about 1% of the total kind of cells in here, that's gonna conduct these signals very quickly, whereas the cardiac muscle, it'll take a little bit longer for the signals to pass through the muscle tissue itself and the cardiac muscle tissue, that's gonna be the vast majority of tissue in the heart. Now there is some non-conductive tissue in the heart, and that's gonna be the fibrous tissue, and that's gonna run from the atrial floor between the atrium and the ventricles. Now the fact that this fibrous tissue right there is non-conductive is very important. We don't want the atria and the ventricles to be contracting at the same time. We want the atria to contract and push the blood into the ventricles, and then the ventricles to contract and push all that blood out of the heart. If this tissue right here was conductive, then we would have the atria and ventricles contracting at the same time, wouldn't be good. And the only way that signal can pass through here is through the cardiac conduction system through this yellow section right there. That's the only part where the signal travels through that fibrous connective tissue. So that fibrous connective tissue separates the atria from the ventricles into two sections that we call the atrial syncytium as well as the ventricular syncytium. A syncytium is just a big, sort of hard to pronounce word that means a group of cells that are all electrically connected to each other. So all of the cardiac muscle in this atrial syncytium are connected electrically, meaning that if one of the cells depolarizes, it depolarizes the next cardiac muscle cell, and that depolarizes the next one. And eventually they'll all be depolarized because they're all electrically connected. Same thing in the ventricular syncytium. When one of those cells depolarizes, that'll depolarize the next cell and the next cell and the next cell until it's all depolarized. Now the signal passing between cardiac muscle cells is sort of slow, I kind of mentioned that earlier, and that's why we need this cardiac conduction system to conduct those signals very quickly so that the atria can contract as one unit and the ventricles especially can contract as one unit. But again, the atrial syncytium will depolarize first, contracting the atria, and then the ventricular syncytium will depolarize, contracting the ventricles. Now let's take a look at the individual parts of the cardiac conduction system. First here we have the sinoatrial node. Now the sinoatrial node is autorhythmic, meaning that it's gonna be sending pulses by itself even without input from some other source. Autorhythmic meaning self-rhythmic. In other words, that SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. It sends a signal every time our heart beats. Now there will be input from the brain, from the cardiac regions of the brain. They'll be sending signals to the heart to speed up that SA node, 
or to slow down that SA node. But even without input from the brain, the SA node is gonna be sending signals itself, causing our heartbeat rhythm. This consistent rhythm happens by increasing permeability in the SA node of sodium ions and calcium ions. So those sodium and calcium ions are slowly entering into the SA node and it prevents potassium from leaving the cells in the SA node. So there's a slow buildup of positive charge over time as sodium and calcium come into the SA node. And then as soon as it reaches a threshold membrane potential, the SA node will send an action potential. Now the signals will eventually get to another node called the atrioventricular or AV node. More on that in just a moment. But next let's talk about the internodal pathway. This is gonna be how the signal transmits from the SA node to the AV node. And if you look at that internodal pathway, there's three branches of it, and they're all passing through the right atrium. Now on my diagram, they look sort of planar or flat with each other, but if we look on the anatomage images, we'll see that these are actually three-dimensional um, running through that right atrium, which we can see right there. So the SA node depolarizes, sends a signal through the internodal pathway to the AV node, and that's gonna depolarize the right atrium. Now eventually that depolarization would make itself over to the left atrium, but that's gonna take a long time without the interatrial pathway, which is gonna run from the SA node over into the left atrium. That interatrial pathway will conduct the signal very quickly into the left atrium and depolarize it. Most of the diagrams that I looked up have the interatrial pathway coming directly from the SA node. But one thing I noticed in the anatomage images is that the interatrial pathway is actually branching off of one of the internodal branches. Even though most of the diagrams you look up on this show it coming from the SA node directly. Great, so the signal comes from the SA node. It's gonna travel through the interatrial pathway as well as the internodal pathway, depolarizing both atria so that they can contract. That signal then is gonna make it to the AV node. Now we've talked about the cardiac conduction system needing to send these signals very quickly, but the AV node sort of does the opposite. There's going to be a delay in the AV node. Now, what would be the benefit of that? Well, like I said earlier, we want the atria to contract before the ventricles contract. So that delay is gonna really separate the atrial contraction from the ventricular contraction. That way we can get all the blood from the atria to the ventricles, and then the ventricles can pump it all out. From the AV node, the signal is gonna pass into the bundle of His, also known as the atrioventricular bundle. That bundle is immediately gonna separate into the right and left bundle branches. Now, unlike the AV node, which passes the signal very slowly, the bundle of His and the bundle branches are gonna transmit that signal very quickly down the septum of the heart. Also, as the signal is traveling through the septum, it's not gonna be stimulating the ventricles to contract just yet. The ventricles will be stimulated to contract when the signal is passing its way back up. That's gonna allow the pumping to happen from the apex of the heart on the way back up to kind of force the blood out through the pulmonary artery and the aorta this way. The tricuspid and mitral valves will also snap shut during this time to prevent the blood from backflowing into the atria. Now extending out of the left and right bundle branches, we have something called the Purkinje fibers. And the Purkinje fibers are gonna take that signal traveling through the bundle branches and spread it out throughout the muscle of the right and left ventricles. That's gonna conduct that signal many, many times faster than if we were only relying on the ventricular syncytium or the connections between all of the cardiac cells. So quick recap of all of that. The SA node or the pacemaker of the heart will send out a signal that'll pass through the interatrial pathway to stimulate the left atrium. It'll also pass through the internodal pathways to stimulate the right atrium. The signal will make it to the AV node where it's gonna pass very slowly to cause a delay before the ventricles will contract. The signal will pass through the bundle of His and the left and right bundle branches. On the way back up, they'll pass through the Purkinje fibers. That's gonna stimulate the cardiac muscle and the ventricles to contract and pump the blood out through the pulmonary artery as well as the aorta. Now let's take a look at an ECG or an EKG. This is the thing that you've seen in like doctor movies and stuff where you see the beep, beep, and if it stops, you hear it go beep, because the heart has stopped beating. But it's a measure of the electrical activity happening in the heart. And it's got three regions here. It's got the P wave, the QRS complex, as well as the T wave. And these three sections correspond to different things happening in the cardiac conduction pathway. So again, we have the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. And you can see that happening one more time there. 
I just really like that animation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this to the cardiac conduction pathway, looking at the P wave, QRS complex, and the T wave. We're gonna start with the P wave. The P wave is gonna correspond to the depolarization of the atria. So we've got the depolarization happening, and you can see those signals traveling through those different pathways, causing depolarization of the atria. So that's the main thing happening here in the P wave. The atria will depolarize. Next we have what we call the PR interval. The PR interval is gonna start at the beginning of the P wave, and last all the way really until the Q part right here. We call it the PR interval, I think because sometimes on ECGs, the Q wave might be hard to identify or might not show up. So we refer to this as the PR interval. You also might see something called the PR segment. So just as a quick clarification, the PR interval starts at the beginning of P and lasts until R, whereas the PR segment is just from the end of P to the beginning of R. So PR interval would be this, PR segment would just be this. Now during the PR interval, the atria are going to contract, and that's gonna send blood from the right atrium into the ventricle, and the blood from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Basically, any blood that was still left in the atrium is gonna get squeezed out through the contraction of the atria. The contracting of the atria will really start early on in the P wave and last throughout this section right here. Also during this section of the PR interval, which is the PR segment, is where we have that AV nodal delay happening. Because as soon as the QRS complex hits, then we're gonna be depolarizing the ventricles. Speaking of which, let's move on to the QRS complex. In the QRS complex, you see this huge R spike. That's because of the signal passing through the bundle of His and the bundle branches, and then through the Purkinje fibers, stimulating all of this cardiac muscle. That electrical activity is gonna be much greater in the ventricles because the ventricles have more cardiac tissue. They also have to pump the blood a lot farther. The atria just had to pump the blood from one chamber to another. The ventricles have to pump the blood to the lungs and then also through the aorta throughout the whole body. So they need a very strong contraction. So we need a lot of electrical activity to cause that to happen. So during the QRS complex, that signal is gonna pass through the left and right bundle branches and through the Purkinje fibers. That's going to depolarize the ventricles. Also, the atria are gonna repolarize. Repolarization is the opposite of depolarization. Depolarization is when tissue becomes more positive and in this case causes it to contract. Repolarization is when it returns back to its resting membrane potential and that muscle is gonna relax and stop contracting. So we have depolarization of the ventricles as well as repolarization of the atria. Basically, ventricles contract but the atria will be stopping their contraction. Now that QRS complex, that big spike in the R, is caused by the ventricles depolarizing. We can't really see the effect of the atria repolarizing on the EKG because it's sort of hidden by that big depolarization of the ventricles. But both of those things are happening during that QRS complex. Up next, we have something called the ST interval. That ST interval is gonna start with S, and last all the way to the end of the T wave. A subset of that is the ST segment, which would just be this section in right there, lasting until the beginning of the T wave. During the ST interval, we're gonna have the ventricles contracting. That's gonna cause blood to be pumped through the aorta, as well as blood to be pumped through the pulmonary artery. That very forceful contraction is gonna be starting kind of at the end of the QRS complex and lasting until the T wave happens. The T wave is when we're gonna be repolarizing the ventricles and stopping the contraction. But those ventricles will be contracting during that ST interval. Now, when the ventricles contract, that's when we're gonna hear our first heart sound, the lub of the lub dub, lub dub. We represent that with S1 for the first sound of the heart. And that sound is caused by the tricuspid and mitral valves snapping shut right before the ventricles will contract and pump the blood out. We need those valves to close, of course, because we don't want the blood to rush back into the atria. We want all that blood to be forced out through the aorta and pulmonary artery. So again, that first heart sound is gonna kind of happen right around the end of that QRS complex as the valves are snapping shut. Finally, the last section of this is the T wave, and the T wave is gonna be the repolarization of the ventricles, or in other words, sort of the turning off of ventricular contraction. After the ventricles are finished contracting, we're gonna have the second heart sound, the dub of lub dub. Just like the first heart sound, the second heart sound is gonna be caused by valves snapping shut, but in this case, that's gonna be the pulmonary valve snapping shut, as well as the aortic valve snapping shut. So the ventricles are relaxing and we don't want the blood that's been pumped out of the ventricles to pass back into them through the aorta or pulmonary artery. So we snap those valves shut to keep the blood out of the ventricles there. And that second heart sound is gonna be happening kind of right at the end of the T wave, somewhere right in there. All right, so a lot going on in that process. Let's do a quick recap. We have the sinoatrial node where the signal will start. We have the interatrial pathway, the signal will travel there 
to depolarize the left atrium. We have the internodal pathway. The signal will travel through the internodal pathways to depolarize the right atrium. The signal will travel to the AV node where it is slowed down or delayed so that the atria can finish contracting before the ventricles get depolarized and contract. We have the bundle of His which is gonna separate into the left and right bundle branches. The bundle and the branches are gonna transmit the signal very quickly because we want the ventricles to contract as one contractile unit as quickly as possible. The signal passes down the septum, and then on the way back up, it's gonna pass through Purkinje fibers, which are gonna distribute the signal throughout the heart muscle to help the ventricles contract all at once from the apex up. All of this electrical conduction is gonna cause the ECG, the electrocardiogram. The ECG will start with the P wave. This is where the atria are depolarizing. Up next, we have the PR interval. This is where the atria are contracting, and it's gonna be pushing blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Next is the QRS complex. This is gonna be where the ventricles are depolarizing, and it's gonna be where the atria are repolarizing, or sort of turning off. Once the ventricles are depolarized, we move into the ST interval, and this is where the ventricles are gonna be contracting, causing blood to pass up through the aorta and pumping blood out through the pulmonary artery as well. And at the beginning of that ST interval is where we have the first heart sound, which is caused by the tricuspid and mitral valves snapping shut. Up next, we have the T wave. The T wave is gonna be where the ventricles are repolarizing or turning off or stopping their contraction. And as those ventricles relax, we're gonna have the second heart sound, which is the dub of lub dub, and that's caused by the aortic and the pulmonary semilunar valves snapping shut. Now let's take a look at some video from anatomage so we can see all of this pumping and contracting and stuff happening in action. So we have the signal starting in the SA node, and we're gonna see the depolarization of the atria. The atria are gonna be contracting, and it's hard to see that contracting of the atria. It's gonna be much less forceful then the contracting of the ventricles later on. The signal's passing through the atria into the AV node, where we have that AV nodal delay. And then the signal's passing through the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers, which is gonna cause that QRS complex. And then we have the ventricles contracting during the ST interval. And finally, the ventricles relaxing until we have another signal from the SA node and we get a new P wave and this process starts all over again. And now let's watch that process happening in real time. It's just a cool process. Imagine this is happening in your heart, like every time it beats, multiple times per second, it's just wild. Now, the only way to really learn this stuff is to practice yourself. So here's the diagram that you can use. Pause the video, test yourself, see if you can label all the parts of the cardiac conduction system, as well as explain what's happening through the different parts of the electrocardiogram. And here's all that information back so you can check and see how you did. Thanks again to Anatomage for sponsoring this video. They make these amazing virtual dissection tables. They have a science table. They also have Anatomage lessons. Lots of awesome stuff. Go check those out in the website link below. And special thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Link in the description if you're interested in joining. All of my supporters on Patreon get access to the diagrams, both labeled and unlabeled, from all my videos, including this one. Thanks for learning about the heart in this video. I've got more videos on the heart and cardiovascular system and other parts of the body, so uh, check those out on the channel if you're interested. And may your sinoatrial node continue sending signals for years and years to come, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.